a novel by Kate Camillo, which is it's classified as much as you can classify anything as a, as a children's novel, but it's quite a mature children's novel. There's, there's a lot of darkness as well as fun in it, uh, and it's the actual novel itself is is quite poetic. But I would say, you know, without putting people off, it's not it's not over literary or literate. But I think what Nancy and Mark have done brilliantly is is create a very dramatic piece and fun piece around that, which keeps the elements of that of the fantastical poetic, but makes makes a, a real dramatic narrative. Um, it's based in a town called Baltees, which through Colin's you know, brilliant set design, and it's set at a time just after a war, a non-specified non war, uh, and I think you'd get a sense of sort of perhaps interwar poverty and gloom at the beginning, but and, and maybe a sort of Central European place, but it's kind of everywhere and nowhere, and in a way every time and no time as well. We are the Count and Countess, well, more rightly the Countess and Count <laughs> Quintet. So we're, we're the kind of, we've had a lot of discussions about this, haven't we? Because it's, it's not like we're the King and Queen, but we're the local landed gentry, essentially. And it's this quite poor town, and we've kept all the money for ourselves. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I play a character called Peter Dishon. Um, Peter is uh, an orphan, who was made an orphan in the world and is um, being sort of looked after by his guardian Bernard's and... Who, who was a friend of his father and they... Again, it's, it's not absolutely clear what happened but his father was lost in the war and they were comrades and so my character Vilna takes on the orphan and, and acts as his guardian. Yeah. Although he hasn't completely left the war in his head. You know? yeah. there's, a, there's a sort of entrenchment there. But that's a good book because I feel like what you have is, is a, um, a community that is in a grief and in a, a lot of loss. And what the play sort of navigates is, um, I think, it sort of navigates the place between loneliness and how you might experience those things. Um, the hope is found then within a community and going back into yeah, like a feeling of helping other people and sharing those things, sharing that pain together and what that can sort of um, do for you and, and how that can help a lot. So it's very timely and very, um, I think it's really magic to, to be doing that at a time now yeah. and it just feels very important to be sort of reconnecting with people. I mean, sharing things and sharing pain and sharing yeah. joy, you know. It's a really enjoyable dynamic because actually it, 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 the woman has inherited the role. Though it is, She's the one with the power, with the title, with the house, and he's married in. We think for love originally, yes. but it's it's all been kind of corrupted and been just, it's about vanity now really, isn't yeah. it? And status. The, the, the show is sort of based on um, the idea that there's these people who really believe in something magical and the people who are afraid of it, you know, and there's that, that polarity that is, is very sort of, you know, um, reflective of, of where we are now, especially in the US as well. Because it is this sort of every man, every world, world. There are, there, you know, there are different musical genres and different uh, sort of the theatrical set pieces, but they they all kind of make sense as part of this multi-layered world, you know. And they, you know, it, I think I think it shows a real sort of cornucopia of creativity. It's it's, it's a sort of magical. Mixture, isn't it? It's a, it's a story about a community. It's very much an ensemble piece. It's quite, you know, like we, we have our kind of protagonist, Peter, who takes us through the story, but there, there are so many characters. And the narrator. And the narrator. It's making it very easy for me because, you know, it's, when, when you get something off somebody else to play off, uh, the very, you know, Jack's very generous, so I, I find it very easy to, to, to get into our scenes. I mean, it's. Again, without giving too much away, it's not the most functional of relationships, and that's part of Peter's journey. Yeah. Um, but in terms of how it's working, I'm very lucky to be working with such a fine and generous young actor. I would say exactly <laughs> the same thing. And yeah, just to highlight the fact that I think 
after, sp after time away from it, I think there is every interaction is there's so much more behind that now. Everything means more. I was just saying, it's like coming into a, any sort of room and being able to share your coffee with someone, like another creative, or talk about ideas. Or mm. they're all things that I feel like before I definitely took for granted. And um, every th every sort of interaction now has so much more. Um, behind it, so much more media behind it, and it's just really joyful <laughs> to be doing it. You know, yeah. I've, I've never worked for the RSC before. I don't. You haven't either. No. But it, the resources available, you know, the the, the 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 time that is given to do things properly. You know, I, I just feel like whatever happens, we are being given the chance to, to make this the best it possibly can be. Very luckily, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of costume changes. <laughs> I think I'm probably the, the person who has the most costumes in the show. It's, I think, um, Moira Rose from wow. Schitt's Creek, I yeah. think, because that's a quite a good comparison. Colin Richmond's designs are absolutely they are. beautiful. So, and he's such a wonderful person, like, just so collaborative, all about character. Yeah. The elephant is such a big part of this. Yes. And I think there's something about uh, the presence of an animal that, can, that actually frees humans up to interact in a way via the prism of that an element, uh, animal, if you like. That they wouldn't interact if it was just each other. It somehow does liberate, doesn't it? Yeah. And um, I think that's part of the story, but I think it's also part of our process. It's it? it definitely part of the room. There is an elephant in our room <laughs> watching us all the time. And it really does, it's really, we were just saying, it's complete fantasy. It's, we really forget that she's there. <laughs> it's really, really special. Yeah. Music never stops really through the whole, whole show. Yeah, that's what we're kind of going, that's what they, they want, is that it's sort of room. Not through stuff, because there are scenes, but so there isn't any applause until the end of the first half. What I'm sort of finding with Peter is that there is a lot of bravery and a lot of dreaming and dreams seem to be a real sort of symbol within mm. within the piece and Peter could be labelled as a dreamer but he's also somebody who is really set on on achieve on finding that when he realizes what could be a possibility he's um, ready to go, sort of go on the venture um, I wish I had more of a quality myself but um, there's what Peter discovers is something that I really care about uh, what Peter's discovery seems to be part of that is the importance of kindness the importance of empathy the importance of sharing and connection and connection exactly and um, yeah that's um, a really lovely thing to be able to sort of find through somebody and um, yeah. And he gets to sing some really beautiful songs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like by Mark Tyler's written. I am so grateful because he's written these beautiful, beautiful melodies. There's something really special about um, any show that involves sort of practical magic in a broad term of sort of theatre making too. Um, and I think that we're part of a show that has these huge practical elements. We have really talented puppeteers and we have magic magic happening, actual practical magic and um, these incredible set designs from Colin and the costumes and the music from Mark and everything. What I get to feel in that scene and what I hope that an audience gets to experience when they see the full show is, is watching a company of actors really working hard for them. Like they'll get to see the working out, if that makes sense. I think after the time away as well. And it, and it does inform that. I feel like it's really special to watch something where you get to see exactly how hard everybody's working and experience them making something for you to entertain and to sort of teach and tell a story. The fact that, the, the fact that we have a puppet like that in the show, we have an animal like that, that is, you know, three really talented puppeteers coming together to create one sort of being. And the amount of empathy that involves it's really special that everything in our show relies on everybody working together and um, there's no ego there, there's just like love and joy and I think gratitude. It's a, it's a sort of dark fairy tale. Um, 
but there are lots of lightness and lots of lightness and lots of fun. I think what they'll get is everything they would have wanted and expected from a Christmas show at the RSC.